nasty to do, right? It's not the worst thing we've ever done, but it's part of our worst instincts. Banger video. I will not tell you what the spot is, and I don't think he mentioned it either, by hey, the way. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by John Oliver. Yeah, we are. <laughs> He's the Peabody Award-winning host of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, a show that's won more than two dozen Emmys since premiering in 2014. Catch new episodes Sunday nights on HBO at 11 o'clock Eastern with past episodes canonized rather conveniently right here on YouTube. Oh, John sorry. Oliver, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean. Um, I was going to... I was going to say it's a pleasure to be here, but let's not start with me lying right into the Right, face. right. You know, that's how we build the trust. That's here. right. We just exactly. have to be honest I, with Exactly. Each other. Let's build an immediate connection. My instinct says this is going to go very, very badly. As people who don't know, Sean Evans is my mortal enemy. Let Stockholm Syndrome commence. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll be honest, that was hotter than I wanted the first one to be. <laughs> I would not say great at this point. Old school house and heads know the lore. No, this is the one bald guy who I don't immediately fetishize, okay? I would say, uh-oh, we're working with a different spectrum mm -hmm. than my face is used to. We're gonna put a number to it today, all right? Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> Do you have an all-time favorite misuse of HBO resources oh, for a man. bit on Last Week Tonight? I mean, I love misusing their resources. <laughs> there is, there's almost nothing in life that makes me happier than doing something I think they're gonna be a little bit mad at. So yeah, we, we bought Russell Crowe's jockstrap. I was gonna give people context. I don't know if you really need any. <laughs> uh, it was from the movie Cinderella Man. Um, and uh, so we bought it and we sent it to uh, one of the last remaining blockbusters in Alaska. I think that then shut down, I believe. RIP. It was then sent to the last, the actual last blockbuster, which I think is in Oregon. I think that's where Russell Crowe's Cinderella Man jockstrap is right now. <laughs> The Smoky J. I don't like the name at all. Hmm. Not horrible. Right. This might be the only one-sided beef where you're the one with the beef. Yeah, also, it's not real beef, it's a joke. Um, many, many years ago, when I was a young up-and-coming content creator, I created a show called The Breakdown on the Young Turks. The show was brought up for an award at one of these like award shows that doesn't exist anymore. I, I forget what it was called. What was it called? <clears throat> I'm doing a lore dump. It's official. Shadows will know. It's not the streamies. It was the shorties or something. I think it was the shorties. This was also the same year or the same award show that flew me in a private jet alongside David Dobrik and many others from Coachella to the award show. I flew in with nothing, literally high as fuck, on mushrooms, on this private jet. That's where that photo comes from, where I'm like looking all freaked out. Yeah. That's where the private jet scandal comes from. The shorties were like, oh, we already have a private jet that we chartered. If you want to fly on that to New York, that'd be great. I was, of course, dead broke as fuck and thought, yeah, of course I'm going to take the fucking private jet. Are you crazy? Anyway, um, I flew. I wore my mom's clothes to the show to the red carpet, which the Queer Eye guys loved. Okay. And I was up for an award. I was up for bre best new breast, best new like breakout show or something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yep. Best 
new breakout show. I was very excited for it. I had not ever been put up for an award. I thought it was sick. Why do I look alarmed? I'm high as giraffe pussy. Okay. In this. I literally left like neon carnival or something and fucking got on this jet high as a kite. I don't recommend it. Anyway. So I come back. Hassan Houster video now live. Jesus Christ, bro. Why are you doing this to me? Did you tell me you were high or not? I don't remember. Anyway, I get there and basically what ends up happening is I lose. I lost to Sean Evans. Sean Evans won the best uh, new breakout talent segment, whatever the fuck it was called at the time. His show was new and so was mine. And he won. He won over me. This thread is too good. That face when you are spotted on a private jet with your 750k salary. That's from four years ago. I am so high here. This is after Coachella where the shorty awards... Let me hitch a ride with the Dobricks to attend the award show and even announce an award in New York three years ago. I lost best new show to the fucking hot ones and my career has never recovered since. Nice meme though. I like that the stalkering never stopped um, four years uh, ago and it's still the same. It's been four years. And these motherfuckers still haven't stopped. Some people found out about the term champagne socials for the first time and now think it's the ultimate lefty destroy because, you know, someone who's well off can't advocate for a more ethical and fair system. Notice how, ma how much things have not changed. Isn't that fun? Anyway, oh my God, you're right now. There's new people who essentially believe the jet shit. Christ, I know. The point is never give up, dude. <laughs> never give up on your dreams. <laughs> this is a four-year-old pose. It's just funny that it's a four-year-old pose and it was an internal community meme that turned into an external uh psychopathic thing that people still push for hairline looks good here thank you this is probably the first time you've been on r slash Hassan Piker since posting that comment no, I go on r slash Hassan Piker on my own time. I still go on it. Anyway, let's continue. I think you were uh, kind of jarred a little bit by mm -hmm. the first one, mm -hmm. you know, but that would be like, you know, you're a football fan, right? That's like you got out on the pitch, you took yes. a bump, and now you're settled into the game, you know? Yes. Which football are we talking about there? I'm talking about round yes. football, you yes. know, because I'm a host. I'm hospitable. You know Thank what I'm you. saying, John? Yes. Oh, pitch. Pitch was the giveaway. Pitch. I didn't even... That really was hospitable. You said pitch, and I didn't even internalise that you were being gracious. Yes. I love... I love football very much. And that... You're right. That felt like... This one gave me a nudge. Mm -hmm. This one, I don't feel nudges anymore. Because you're in the game, baby. Because I'm in the, the game. game. I'm all about the game. <laughs> So when we had Louis Theroux on the show last oh, year, yeah. he said that his Britishness works as like a superpower for yes. getting American subjects to just reflexively trust him. Does that align at all with your own experience? It does. I mean, he's a brilliant interviewer, right? In fact, I thought I was going to meet him. It was when I was working at The Daily Show. It was a producer there had worked with him, and they, they'd set up something for my birthday, and so he just needed to get me upstairs. And he said, 
Louis Theroux's here, do you want to meet him? And I was so excited. And then I ran in, and it was just a surprise birthday party for me. <laughs> and I had to really reverse engineer. Oh, I thought I was meeting Louis Theroux, not this. An emotional sort of short-circuiting. Right. This yeah, isn't yeah. what I wanted. You're not him. You're celebrating my birth. That's not what I was promised. I would love to meet him as well. I'd also love to meet John Oliver, too. I love John Oliver. I don't care that he's a liberal. I don't care that his foreign policy is, like, pretty much aligned with American foreign policy no matter what. He's one of the good ones. Would you go on Hot Ones and squash the beef? Yes. No. Stella Fuzz, Funky's Hot Sauce. Yeah, the names are getting fun. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't they, though? Actually like that. This is going to be the moment I remember somewhere over here <laughs> as the good times. <laughs> From breaking your nose in a Civil War reenactment yeah. to hiding from security during the 2008 Republican <laughs> National Convention, yeah. what stands out in your memory as being the most harrowing experience you had as a Daily Show field reporter? They were all pretty harrowing, I think. Um, I mean, that was one of my first experiences in America was breaking my nose. It probably made me realize that I was in the right place to work. It was a dream come true to come and work for Jon Stewart. That was my first interaction with the US healthcare system. No notes, by the way, Sean. Works great. Um, <laughs> to get back to the office and hear them playing that clip again and again and laughing so hard, it kind of made me think, oh, you're more concerned about the joke than me, I think. I think this is where I belong. <laughs> you found a home. Yeah. Dude. Los Calientes. Fair day. That was probably so sick. Yeah, no, John Oliver is my, is my, like, my liberal problematic fave, I guess. This video showed the restaurant door and it was easy to reverse image search to find where it is. What? Yeah, dude, I'm not like actually fucking gatekeeping. Shut up. Again, I feel like I'm being hit in the face with a setup jab, right? Right. It's the lead left that is hitting. Why is John Oliver problematic? He's not. I, I just like saying problematic fave like I'm a stan. Me, but or no, that, bias. He's my bias. John Oliver is my bias. That's not the fist I'm worried about. You know what? Just roll with it because mm -hmm. we're moving forward. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Every step is a sauce that's out of the way. You know what I'm saying? So you just take it. If you got kind of a freebie, just take it. Don't wow. apologize for pee. it. Enjoy it. These are the good times. Every These step are the good is times. a sauce out of the way. If that isn't a <laughs> piece of merch, if you don't have that on a t-shirt. Chris, run it. And you're Chris, run leaving it. money on the table. <laughs> for the uninitiated, yeah. what's magical about the Edinburgh Festival and how do you think it shaped oh. you as a stand-up? I mean, the magical thing about it, and you know, that word is overused, but it, to, to me, there is a really magic to it, is that it's not curated. Like so many other festivals, um, uh, you're invited to come so that you maintain a certain standard. The beauty of Edinburgh is that kind of quality control doesn't exist. So it's just uh, absolute free for all of artistic mayhem and that can produce things as great and as terrible as you would imagine. It is the greatest place. I miss it so much every year. It's the best. And you know, it seems like bombing is almost a part oh, of the yeah. process. It's like oh, a rite yeah. of passage when you do that. Is there a set that you look back on and think of as like a comedy nightmare? There was a gig in Edinburgh. I, I, it, I'm not sure if it still goes. Uh, it started at one in the morning. It was called Late in Life and it was a bear pit. So it was, um, starts at one. Notoriously aggressive. Uh, there was one time I'd bombed already, very fun. Uh, and then a comedian had gone on after me and done really well and he was getting an encore. And as he came off, we agreed that it would be funny if I took his encore. So I then went back on and a guy smashed a glass, a beer glass on the table in front of me. And he said, if you tell another joke, I'm going to stab you. <laughs> and I said to him, this, this anger in you, it just can't be about me. And he said, it really is. <laughs> And, you know, that's one of the happiest memories of Edinburgh I have, is having guys saying, I, you are going to compel me to commit an act of violence. <laughs>
that is how much I object to what you think is yeah, funny. Right. Yes, and that violence, it's not me. That's right. It's you. That's right. It, it, the, I promise this is you problem. Your implication is there are other things happening in my life. There, there aren't. I have a stable, happy life. You've turned it upside down and you must be stopped. <laughs> Queso sin queso. I don't know if um if that's a collab I'd encourage. <laughs> but another level of heat, but it seems like you're kind of on top of it. You know, I was a little nervous with the first one, but it does seem like you've caught a rhythm here, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I think Sean Evans and his team are so good at conducting interviews. Like, you always have to have, like, uh, like some, you always have to have, like, an autistic research guy, like Nardwar, the human serviette, on your team that will just, like, pull out some of the most insane shit that you didn't even know other people knew about yourself, okay? And I think Sean does a pretty good job with it. Uh, Nardwar, obviously, is a goat at it. You know, I think he does a great job. <laughs> Vladimir Putin, hot ones. Yeah, I mean, if you if you if you're asking, have my confidence gone up. No, no, I'm still at thinking. That's smart. That's we're, smart. You know, we're, where we're, people get into trouble is when they get overconfident. Yes, at this point, you I know did, what I'm that is not possible. I, <laughs> we're five in. I think we all know where this is heading. <laughs> You have a quote that I found interesting where you said, the problem is the loudest journalism in America is generally saying the least. Can you unpackage that? With our show, no one in their right mind would try and do a show about prison health. No one, no one wants to hear about that, but they should know about it. And so we're gonna force feed it to them. And we're in a very, very lucky position because we don't have the commercial pressures that other certain news outlets do have so we are lucky to be able to follow whatever um whatever interests us and force feed it to people but they can't or won't do that and so you are left with yeah kind of yammering talking heads who um on on tv who are, are really not talking about much and that's the problem with being in a perpetual election cycle and we're in election year now it never really feels like the election Chill. year stops <laughs> that's the problem right and that takes out all the air from a room because you're just talking about people, uh, but candidates, like politicians, whereas policies are much more important than politicians. Um, but we are focused on the personalities and that's easy to do, but it's not the most important stuff. Bourbon and maple think Good they're take. concealing what the third word is promising. Now what's nice about this, is I do think you get a little maple up front, you know? The first thing you catch sure. is maple. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then what happens <coughs> yeah. is there's this tail on maple it. Maple delivered. <laughs> Bourbon, not detected, but I appreciate the idea is there. And then the Reaper, Reaper says, actually. <laughs> I'm, I'm the star of the show. <laughs> That's right. I'm the captain now. I am, I am the guest at this party <laughs> who is going to dictate the evening. <sighs> mm. Are you someone who finds comfort in the stress and tension of an adversarial interview? It almost seems like it would be like a prerequisite for anyone who went through the Daily Show School of Broadcasting. Yeah, that's a really good question. Yes, is the answer. And I can't really square that with who I am as a person. There is something where my heart rate goes down and I don't feel what they are feeling. So yeah, I don't, I, I can't really explain why I don't mind it and I'm, and I'm drawn to hostile interviews. Um, yeah, they, it brings out a side of me that I don't particularly like, but it is there. <laughs> okay, the forbidden fruit, all right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Same with me. Yep. This is a jump. Um, that wasn't fun. <laughs> That's not an experience I'm gonna 
Look, back upon me. Remember the good old days? Yeah. Remember the good old days, yeah. John? Remember Funky's hot sauce? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Funky's hot nice. sauce. <laughs> With your Stella fuzz. <laughs> and your fun little cartoon fuzz. Dude, sometimes I feel like these guys are joking. You know what I mean? Like, I, like I feel like you just made this stuff up, right? Like, I, I, I legitimately think, like, people just come in here, make up a new name, and they're just like, bro, homunculus funky man fucking went ape on you, dude. He went nutty on you, dog. Like, Dude, you don't know what kind of smoke homunculus funky man have for you. You don't even want to know, dog. He went crazy, dude. Nutsack Kevin owns you, brother. Are you fucking joking right now? He just got you good. <laughs> you didn't hear it? The forgotten boofer. Yeah, it's just like... I, I like I don't first of all I don't need to know I, I don't need to know that I don't need to know who these motherfuckers are and I don't need to know what every person whose opinion is what the fuck <laughs> and then you got the dude the funky rational Jeff just cooked your ass in the QRTs oh dude Dude, he absolutely fucking, he absolutely destroyed me, dude. He was joking. Chatter was joking. Lamau. Oh, he was, right? There it is. Because, like, because sometimes they're not joking. But it'll be, like, a person I've never heard before being like, dude, this guy fucking destroyed your soul. And I'm like, I have no idea what is happening. How does it be, feel to be consistently owned by the libs? Uh, it doesn't feel good. I hate being owned by the libs, dude. Elmo got a thread going. <laughs> we had fun, didn't we? <clears throat> if I went to a Liverpool match at Anfield, what's one chant and one obscenity I'd need to know? Wait. Most John Oliver's a scouser? John Oliver's a scouser? John Oliver's from Liverpool? No shot. It, did I miss that part? Did he say that? Or does he just like... No, I think he's from around Birmingham. Oh, ew. Yes, he grew up in Liverpool. Shit. Born and raised, it's known. That's awesome. I did not know that at all. Last chance, you should probably. Is it Broomy? Bus supports live appeal. Um, I would be spending my whole life fucking moving away from Birmingham if I lived or was from Birmingham. I would also do my very best to be like, oh, Birmingham, definitely not from Birmingham. Broomies are the bloody best. His mom is from Liverpool, according to Wacky. Wacky, Wacky, Wacky. Right? From Liverpool? You have a lot of sugar today? No. What's the worst UK accent? Probably Birmingham. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone says that. Or Scouse. No, I like a Scouse accent, but Birmingham shit. Where are you from? Newcastle. Everyone's favorite. Up the tune. So that's the best UK accent. Aye. <laughs> uh, Birmingham. What am I doing on the stream? Watching a man practice a British accent? No, you're watching a man perfect a British accent. Isn't that where Patty DeBatty's from? Yes, Patty DeBatty is from Liverpool. Not a Tory. I'm from Liverpool. No, lad. I'm not a Tory. I'm a scouser. I'm from Liverpool. Um, anyway, Geopold is from Broom. Oh, God. All right, let's continue. Oh, 
It's basically Mo Salah, Mo Salah running down the wing. Salah, la, 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 the Egyptian king. That's it. I think I got that. Yeah, you can do it. It'll be great. My, my kids knew that song before they knew anything else. If, if right now, if I say to them, Mo Salah, they'll just, even if they're in a different room, they'll say, one in down the wing. Like, That's right, kids. <laughs> That's right. Where does nailing that free kick in uh, Soweto, when you're covering the oh world, God. where does that fall on your list of career accomplishments? It has to be up there. It's, I can't, it is so depressingly high. <laughs> I, I'm genuinely embarrassed to say how much it meant to me scoring that free kick. In my head, I'm seeing a wall of like four or five, like six foot guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it bending all the way around, then kissing the bottom of the crossbar and going in. It, it went in. And I just started running. <laughs> Absolute joy coursing through my body. And yeah, it's one of the best sporting moments of my life. And I think, and the whole thing was kind of set up as a joke, right? It wasn't a game. He might have let it in. But um, the fact I scored, I think, a serviceable free kick in Soweto is spectacular. I mean, I've been pulling this off, but I guess. There's, uh... There's nowhere to run. No. No. All right. OK. Mm -hmm. This will know almost immediately. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Whoa. And I'm not going to lie to you, John, it's just going to kind of build from here a little bit. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. You know, I just want to be transparent. Oh, good. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty angry at that. Yeah. No, I get it. Are you about to smash a glass? Please don't stab <laughs> me, John. <laughs> it's not about you, Sean. I'm There's a shanking! Sean, is that a, is that a shanking joke? Fucking glass, yeah. Oh, fucking glass, yeah. No, it's not about you. Um, so how many of these Suck have you had in your life? I'll estimate 315 times. You're going to die, aren't you? Uh, but I made it so far, you know what I mean? Maybe I'm actually I'm sure getting stronger. sure you made it so far, you know? but it feels like the science hasn't caught up to what you're doing to your body yet. No, I know, I'm a one of one, you know this what I feels, mean? Yeah, this feels like the kind of stomach version of CTE for right. football players. Yeah, yeah. They're going to cut your stomach open and realize, oh, yeah, you They're can't gonna actually do this. They're going to read about medical journal This someday. actually isn't OK. <laughs> um, and then just be careful around your eyes, you know what I mean? Because you have it on your fingers. Makes I can sense. see the tears coming, so I'm just uh -huh. be very careful. Be very yeah. careful. And you know what? While you endure that, yeah. I know that you spend over a month preparing to systemically dissect all these complex issues on your show. We do. But after the bomb, I think it would just be kind of fun to get your totally unprepared <laughs> raw take on some hot topics. So I'll just so throw it at you, So everything, just to be clear, Sean, everything that I just said I don't like, you want me to do yeah, now. Yeah, 100%. What I like is, you know, considered, I wish the news did it more. Yeah, take your time. Right, right. Render a coherent opinion. Make sure you back it up. Don't shoot from the hip. What you're saying is, the walls are closing in, and I've pulled the guns. Go. The Go. Muppets. The Muppets. Yes. Muppets. OK. I love the Muppets so much. In many ways, crazy this might sound, we've kind of modeled the show around the Muppets. Um, like those big things that they uh, that did. <laughs> the, you know, the big things the Muppets did. Is it real talk, Sean? Shit's got to be crazy, but no. The answer is no. When you eat that much hot sauce, which I don't even think he eats that much hot sauce, but if he were to eat like a shit ton of hot sauce, your body gets used to it. There was a point where there was a point where I basically was eating um, those like spicy yellow peppers every day. Right. And at first, like for the first week, it's just like your butthole is on fire when you're pooping, but you develop a tolerance just like your mouth gets used to it. Your asshole gets used to it too. I don't know what the yellow peppers are that I have, but they were really spicy. I forget what it's called. They're not like banana peppers or something. They're not like sweet. Did I don't know what I'm talking about now? <laughs> uh, I love, I love, I love um, puppets, Sean. 
<laughs> um, Love this, Island. This feels like my Vietnam. <laughs> I shouldn't have got into this, and I've got no good way out. Yeah, and it, you, uh, the, the napalm is... <laughs> yeah. You can feel yeah. it in the room. Sorry, you were saying... Uh, Love Island. Love Island. Love Island is um, Britain, Britain's id. Um, it is, you take us, if you take us at our best with Monty Python, I'm afraid you must also take us at our worst with Love Island. <laughs> George Santos. George Santos. George Santos in office, I kind of turned on... It seemed like, at the start, this guy has no place in politics. Towards the end, I thought, I, I kind of love this guy. He's this part of me, I, not a part that I particularly respect, one that I try and mute, sort of thinking, I love, well, now what's he doing? <laughs> He's got a mystery baby, sounds right. Come on, George, what do you got next? It felt like he was, his whole time in office seemed to be was again produced by Andy Cohen in a way that I genuinely liked. The bomb beyond insanity. The bomb beyond insanity? That is just an objectionable thing for humanity to do, right? It's not the worst thing we've ever done, but it's part of our worst instincts. It's really <laughs> terrible. But you've survived it, and it's been such a funny but stupid thing to say about a hot sauce. <laughs> behind us. You say that. You'll never be able to take that away from you. You say that. I couldn't say I'd be completely surprised if I woke up in a hospital room now and they said, oh no, you. You blacked out after queso sin queso. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually shocked. Uh, as the chatter also pointed out, that Sean Evans didn't ask him about like his furry fetish. That's a bit of a research L. So what? What the fuck is this? Mata Sanos hot sauce, and it's a monkey in a top hat, which I do like. <laughs> Is this going to be worse? No, nothing's going to be as bad okay. as what you just said. It won't be fun, but it will not be worse. Yeah, that's a perfect description of this. <laughs> this is not fun. But not worse. Why am I still eating it? I don't know. I'm Why just following still... along with you. By the way, I talked to with one of the last week tonight writers, and they said the funny first stuff mostly comes from John. Did you ask them if there's a secret Hasanabi head in the writer's room? Or who the secret Hasanabi head is in the writer's room. Because we know there is one. There's no way. Don't say Ego Andy, bro. Don't say Ego Andy. We know there is one. We know. They made too many inside community memes outside. It's one of those instances... It's one of those instances where it doesn't even fucking matter if, if uh, everyone says no. I just know in my heart that it is real. John? How, how, why on earth am <laughs> eating more of that? Maybe you like it, you know? Yeah, there's a deep... tension that you find. By the way, I, talk, I will work with their partner. I will. I work with their partner. I told Ryan Ken you'd probably have them on the show, and I think they'd be down. Wait, who? What? You work with what? Whose partner? I don't even know. I don't know who Ryan Ken is. But, um, Wirechat is disputing community memes. Ryan Ken is a TikTok person. You've liked their stuff before. Let me find a link. Wirechat is disputing community memes. Makes no sense. Um, it's like uh, fun to just say that I'm wrong. Find comfort in. Yeah, exactly. It was a deeply self loathing of myself. Being, yeah. You deserve it. <laughs> you deserve the monkey in the hat spitting its metallic venom at you. <sighs> Of the odd jobs that you worked before TV, which do you remember fonder? Shoveling oats as a factory <laughs> worker or working the Jesus. phone for someone who trafficked and stolen <laughs> kitchen appliances? I did do both of those things. There was one, there was one odd job that I had that one summer when I was a kid, I was a cashier this is my... like a independent Oh, this guy supermarket. writes for- It was when there were price stickers on things. Wait, this guy writes for The Daily Show? I mean, not, not The Daily Show, uh, John Oliver? Yeah, this guy's awesome. He's funny as fuck. Um, 
<sighs> I guess he does uh, writing for last week tonight. I'm pretty sure the Hassan ever hit is Daniel O'Brien. I don't know. We'll never find it. They won't admit it, but it's okay. They them on shit. My bad. Wait, I didn't even did. Wait a minute. Did I even gender them? I thought I said, this guy's awesome. Guy can be non-binary. But maybe I said him. Oh, I didn't know. My bad. You were supposed to have a mention of the Elon Musk segment, but they cut you out like they cut the top of the hour ad break. That's like not even a good trial. Uh, like imagine earlier today, earlier today, the chatter that put a secret code in his, in its like, uh, in their, their ridiculous uh, rant. And now this guy is just like, <coughs> Didn't even try. Who's doing an ad break now? Things you had to input it. To make the day go, interestingly, I kind of had a kind of dynamic pricing system for people. So there were people like, <laughs> I would overcharge some people so I could undercharge others. So it was, it was basically operating my own kind of taxation system on, I know that you've, you, you came up in a nice car. Bad news, these beans are gonna cost more than you think. <laughs> This woman comes in with four kids. These beans are going to be half price for you, <laughs> and it, it made it work. So it was, it was like my perfect version of making, um, you know, <laughs> the world. You're like a Robin Hood. You're a, you're a cashier Robin. Hood. Yeah, that was a fun job, though. Yeah. All right, John. All right. Wow. Okay. So, what's this? Ah. Oh. What the hell? We've come this far. <laughs> you do, is that all right? Let me see. I'm not gonna lie, the hot one with spicy wings, like the wings kind of look busted. Yeah, that's generous. Okay. I'd maybe do one of these. Do, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Am I crazy? I'm at a point, to be honest, where um, I'm not sure I can feel anything anymore. Yeah, right. I feel like a spice. So We're so on the other now. side. We're yeah. on the other side. Yeah. Well, cheers, John. What a cheers. Run. Salud. Salud. We did it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, and again, like the last one. Green doesn't suit you. Oh, green with envy. No, I don't have a real. They are Gordon hated them vegan wings for this episode. Yeah, I I don't have a real uh, animosity towards Sean Evans chatter. Not fun, but it's all behind us. Yeah, it kind of doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore, right? This resets. Wait, how do they do vegan wings? Do they put like, is it plastic instead of the bone? Like, how does that work? Body's expectations of what is allowable. The hard part's over, John. Yeah. We just have one more question for you. Yeah. And to do it, I want to kick it back to when we had Trevor Noah in the show. Okay? okay. And he said that the parting words that he received from John Stewart when taking over the show was, Oh yeah, what? I'm leaving because I'm old and angry and you're young and happy. So enjoy it while it lasts. Is someone who's <laughs> marinated and Okay, dude. <clears throat> John Oliver, significantly uh, better talent. I'll just say it. Okay. Another, that is an actual one-sided beef, I guess, that, uh, that I've, I've maintained for years. It's not, it's not Sean Evans. It's, uh, it's Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. That's the, that's the real one-sided beef. news headlines and commentary for nearly two decades how do you think your work has shaped your view of the future like do you think that you've been permanently fossilized in a kind wait, of wait what dua lipa dude it has nothing to do with dua lipa i mean that's insult to injury sure but that's not the real reason i've told you guys this before a mutual friend of ours when i was at the young turks introduces a soul house west hollywood and he literally just like he snubbed the shit out of me he didn't even like look at me Okay, he was just like, yeah, whatever. And I have never, I've never, like, I remember that. Okay. 
I remember that forever. He snubbed the fuck out of me. And it was like 100%. It was just like such a big timer move, which is fine. Like I wasn't, you know, it's not like I'm a, I'm still not a famous person, but back then I was like not even remotely famous. And I, it's just like, even if it doesn't even matter if I'm like famous or not, he was just like so rude in general. Okay. So that was one. And then uh, comparing that to my experiences uh, with like Hassan Minhaj, who was incredibly fucking nice from the jump, you know, I just carried with me that um, animosity. But he's also done a bunch. He's he's done a bunch of stuff. Who was the nicest big celeb to you? Oh. Who's a big celebrity I've met? I don't know. Um, wait, you met other Hassan? Yeah, I've met I met Hassan Minaj. We've hung out before. 